everybody, my name is Lauren Pearl, here with fellow Harvard freshman Jack Silvers and my representative, Congressman Jamie Raskin. Here at the IOP, we conduct the Harvard Youth Poll. The last Harvard Youth Poll that came out in December found that more than half of Americans ages 18 to 29 are fearful for the future of our democracy. What would you say to those Americans who are fearful for the future? There's no doubt that there are a lot of troubling things going on and things that we need to be concerned about, uh, starting with climate change, which I know weighs very heavily on the minds of your generation, making sure we've got health care, and of course the rising authoritarian and racist and anti-Semitic and fascist assault on democracy all over the world. So there's a lot to worry about, but you know, I'm not in the prognostication business. I'm in the mobilization business. This is a magnificent generation you're part of that is really beyond the racism and anti-Semitism and the homophobia and the immigrant bashing. I place a lot of hope and a lot of investment of my energy in you guys. That's why I do my Democracy Summer Project with college students, with high school students to galvanize a new generation of leaders and organizers. And the polls I've seen show that your generation is registering and voting more than two to one Democratic. I, I love the fact that your generation is seeing things our way and is not in interested in trying to revive all of the monsters and ghosts of the 20th century. Because you are so fantastic at engaging youth political activists through your Democracy Summer Fellowship Program, what do you think youth advocacy organizations can do today to make political advocacy more accessible to diverse youth? I mean, I guess I would flip the question around, Lauren, and say, you know, what are the things that young people are doing that those of us who are sinking deep into middle age uh, <laughs> need to learn from you guys? Digital organizing, and what are the things that are on your minds? You know, we can't get people, young people, from my perspective, and I'm speaking as a partisan here, but we can't get young people registered fast enough. The nature of American generational politics, going back to the very beginning of the Republic, is that each generation transforms politics by bringing its own perspectives and its own point of view. You guys need to be outspoken and engaged and as active as possible to get through the multiple crises of the time. As a member of Generation Z, one of the first that was born in the aftermath of 9-11, I think that watching the events of January 6th was one of the scariest moments, in my view, that I've ever experienced when it comes to America and my faith in America. But I think like many, I was inspired by your leadership in the weeks after that as an impeachment manager investigating January 6th while you were dealing with your own form of personal trauma. What kept you going through those weeks and in the year plus that's passed, have we moved forward as a country? I did write a book kind of trying to address that. It's about that 50-day period in my life that began with the catastrophe of our losing our beloved son, Tommy, who was actually a second year student here at Harvard Law School. At the time, it was a Wednesday and a week after after that was the violent direction in the Capitol. My daughter Tabitha was with me the day before we had had uh, Tommy's burial service in Montgomery County. Um, and a week after that, uh, we had the impeachment on January the 13th and Speaker Pelosi had asked me to become the lead impeachment manager. And then for the next month, I was immersed in assembling as best as we could the facts of the case. So these events are all deeply intertwined in my life and my psyche. I wrote my book uh, to try to reflect on the question you asked me and it ended up as a, a love letter to my son Tommy, who we miss every day, and also a love letter to America that we're fighting for every day. The threat that was unveiled on January 6th, it's as close to fascism as I ever want my country to come. We need to tell this story to America in the hearings that will take place in May and June. Because legislative and judicial protections such as the Equal Rights Amendment, Title IX, Roe v. Wade, the Violence Against Women Act have been debated for decades and in the case of the ERA a century, they often lose their sense of urgency. How can youth activists build enthusiasm, momentum, and energy around these important legislative and judicial protections to prove that they are timely and pertinent. The struggle for constitutional amendments is maybe not just as important, but almost as important as the amendments themselves. When people say, oh, well, what was the use of the movement for the ERA back in the 60s and 70s when it didn't pass? It radically transformed the equal protection jurisprudence of the Supreme Court and everything that Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the ACLU Gender Rights Project did. I think the vast majority of people support it. There, there is a determined right-wing opposition to it, which is fabricating stuff about its relationship to the rights of the transgender community. It will 
pass as part of a small d democratic resurgence in the country of majority sentiment. Thank you so much for coming in to watch today. It was such an honor for us to interview Congressman Raskin and we hope that you learned as much about democracy from Congressman Raskin as we did. Thank you.